We're the largest snacking company in the world. That everyone in the business is a leader and have a role to play. So it just naturally made sense that, you know, my career would progress. And I wish someone had told me when I was in high school that that was an option. It's all about maintaining relationships and... We have such a wide array of academic backgrounds and the SEEK has a strong network of women here to help you. Well, hey guys, so today we are joined by Duncan, who works for the Naval Shipbuilding College. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Beck. Great to be here. I'm really excited to talk to all your students about uh, Naval Shipbuilding careers. Um, yeah. it's an exciting industry to get into. Yeah, sounds awesome. So firstly, can you explain who your organisation is and what is it that you exactly do? Yeah, so the Naval Shipbuilding College is a, a government initiative, a federal government initiative. Um, and we are working with all of the uh, companies within industry, within the shipbuilding industry, to find careers, um, find out what, that, what those careers look like, find training pathways into those careers, and then to encourage people to come into those careers. And there are, there's some pretty exciting jobs that are available. So that's, what, that's how we work. Um, and uh, part of that is talking to you today. Yeah, awesome. So what about yourself? What's your current role and who do you deal with day to day? And what does this sort of day in the life look like for you? Yeah, look, I've got a very impressive title. It's the Deputy Program Manager for WA of the Naval Shipbuilding College. Wow. Um, comes with a very long email address. Um, <laughs> I, um, I've, I've got a background as an engineer. So I, I studied engineering at the Defence Force Academy a, a few years ago now. Um, and, uh, and spent some time in Army after that. Um, but I, I've come into this job through um, my time in, in training. So uh, I spent about five years working for TAFE um, and then came into this job. And, and my job now is, is all around um, spending that time with industry to really understand what they need for people coming into their companies um, and then trying to find really cool ways to uh, attract people into the industry. And, and I've, I found that it's just one of those things that people don't know very much about. Yep. And you can, it, it can, you can be, you know, living a couple of kilometres away from a shipyard where they're building some of the most amazing machines at the moment, uh, and you wouldn't necessarily know about it. Absolutely, especially I feel like when you're in high school, when you're making those important decisions on your future. And I mean, what a cool job to be able to do. Um, and I'm sure there's a million different opportunities available as well, which I'm sure we'll get into, um, yeah. but you're just not aware of it. Um, naval shipbuilding, I guess, is it, as the name suggests, building big ships for the Navy? Is that Look, what it that's is? A, that's definitely a part of it. Um, <laughs> and, and I suppose that's the easy thing for me to talk about is, uh, is these are really complex big projects and they're exciting like uh one of the um one of the stories i like telling is part of a, a pre-apprenticeship program so this is difficult too um you go and do a work placement as part of the, the six-month program and uh we had a story about someone who had come to do a work placement and uh, with one of the companies in shipbuilding and then they go back to uh they go back to tafe after they've done this sort of three or four weeks of, of work placement and talk about well, they did. You know, one guy was, uh, you know, saying, "Oh, yeah, no, I worked on, worked in a lawnmower company. Um, yeah, you know, pulled apart lawnmowers. Sometimes it was a little bit different. I got a whipper snipper or a chainsaw. Okay, it's good for four weeks. No worries. Uh, someone else went and worked in a pump company, and they pulled apart big pumps and small pumps and medium pumps and everything. Yeah. And then uh, this kid had been uh, crawling around an Anzac class naval frigate, and he pulled apart a missile launcher. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> now, that is the story that you want to go home with, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, so I suppose those are some of the jobs that, that people automatically associate. With, you know, you see a big ship, you see photos or, or video on, uh, on the news or whatever of, of them launching things or, you know, steaming through the, the seas and you go, okay, I can sort of see some of those roles. But there's a lot of jobs in there that you just, you don't really think about. Um, no. really the the, um, uh, the the trades that put all these things together they're the last thing that happens mm. um, there's so much design work and and planning that goes in before that um, that that really is critical to making sure that 
that ship works. Um, so there's a lot of really fantastic opportunities there for uh, engineering careers, for designing careers. Um, you know, these vessels aren't drawn in, you know, this is, this is no longer the age of um, a one size paper that you're flipping through like this. It do that doesn't happen anymore. All it's high tech, I can imagine. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a 3D design on a computer and you can spin it around on the computer and see exactly where you are and zoom right in yeah. to the part of the ship that you want to see that you need to work on. Yeah. And imagine being like involved from that, um, you know, early stage through to actually standing there in front of this huge big ship and seeing it actually built and finished. Like it would be absolutely like the coolest experience to see it from, you know, on a computer yeah. To actually being built in front of your very eyes too. Absolutely. I mean, you think about the reward that you get from, um, you know, uh, you can see the, the, the struggle that you've had to go through to overcome all of these engineering challenges along the way. And then you see it steaming out. Yeah. Not steaming, but um, you see it rolling out through the, uh, you know, launching on into the water. Um, and then you right. get it off, you know, going off and, and, um, and you know, supporting our, our Navy. Um, and allowing them to do their really important job away from our shores. Yeah, amazing. That's, it's pretty cool. So cool. Um, so what companies can you work for in the industry? So there's a lot of really big companies that um, people might recognise some of the names. So um, uh, BAE Shipbuilding have a, um, uh, sorry, BAE Systems have a really big um, project. So that's a, a frigate which is being built out of Adelaide, but there are parts of that that will be built all over the country. Um, people may have heard about Naval Group, uh, who are building 12 submarines. Again, that's being done in Adelaide. Um, and again, they will have jobs all over the country to support that very, very complex build. Um, you know, there's more than a million parts in a submarine um, and they've all got to come from somewhere. So they've got to be designed somewhere. They've got to be built somewhere. And as much as possible, this is being done in Australia. Um, people might have heard of uh, companies like Talus, um, uh, ASC, uh, who are Australian Submarine Corporation, as they were. Um, they might have heard of companies like Civmec, who has traditionally done um, a lot of work in oil and gas and civil construction. So they've worked on um, the Perth Stadium um, and the bridge over here. Um, and now they're building ships. Um, I might have heard of uh, some of the other companies like, um, uh, yeah, I've lost companies. <laughs> Sorry. Right. But there's plenty of them. <laughs> there's plenty of them. So there are bucket loads. Um, but they're the really big companies. Yeah. I suppose it's really important to know that um, we know for those builds, there are literally thousands of companies in the supply chain. So that's all of the companies that contribute to those builds. Um, and they might be much smaller companies that are based just down the road from you. Um, there's a company called Hoffman Engineering here in Perth, um, and they're based in a, an industrial area that's a you know, fair way inland. It's, it's, you, know, you, you can't get there by sea. Um, and they're churning out really important components that are um, manufactured to very, very fine um, tolerances uh, in this huge shed in, uh, you know, in an industrial area and that goes onto a ship. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. So what sort of jobs are on offer? Um, you know, what sort of things are we, are we talking here? I, I mean, the, the trade is, is the easy one to, to picture, as I mentioned earlier, um, and there are a whole range of them. Um, so metal trades, um, electrical trades, mechanical, um, uh, trades that you may not necessarily sort of think about. Um, there's an awful lot of um, air conditioning and heating and ventilation on ships. So those, yeah. those trades all need to be considered. So they're really good pathways that, that you can, you know, come in and, and do your apprenticeship and, and get into to a role like, like that. Um, there's also heaps of engineering demand. So um, if you are considering electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, if you are thinking about software engineering, we need lots of you, please come and work for shipbuilding. Um, there's, and there are pathways again within those areas. Um, so once you come, you might come in as a, a graduate electrical engineer and end up working in a, system, in, in a systems engineering 
space. So that's trying to look at uh, the whole package that you're working on, not just a simple component. And a systems engineering approach is really going from, uh, they call it from cradle to grave. So if right from the very start of um, the existence of, a, of a, a widget, whatever it might be, right the way through to it's fitted onto a ship, it's maintained, um, and then what do you do with it when it's no longer doing its job? Um, how do you get rid of it? Um, yeah. you know, can you recycle it and use it somewhere else? So there's, there's very clear pathways there within the engineers as well. And again, a massive demand for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and they work really closely with the designers. So uh, designers is another, um, another career path that would be a good place to start. Um, again, it's a, a qualification that you can study through. Uh, offer a, lot of, a lot of designers study a qualification through TAFE um, yep. and then learn on the job as well. Um, and then, yeah, they may well take a, a, a clear path into um, engineering. Um, and there's also, I suppose, a, a very well-trodden path from engineering or trades or designers into project management roles. Yeah. So the project management roles are, you know, you can understand that you've got all of these, all of these different people working towards the same goal, which is, uh, yeah, well, the ultimate goal is build a ship. Um, that's good, um, but there are smaller parts of that. So um, it may be that you have a part which is build the propeller for the ship. And that's a fairly distinct project. So you need to get the design right for that. You need to get uh, the engineering calculations done on that. So it's the right size and shape and it's going to do everything that it needs to do to push the ship through the water. Um, and then it goes over to the designers. They make sure that that's all working, uh, that they've got the right design. And then it will go to a trades to a, a trade company somewhere, which will make the propeller. Um, but then they've got to fit it as well. So, you know, the, there's the, the project manager will be overseeing all of that work. Um, and it's about making sure that things happen at the right time, at the right place, um, and to the right standard. So, um, and I, I suppose importantly as well, because it's being paid for, uh, for the right cost. So, exactly. It certainly sounds like a job um, for someone who loves to work in a team because by the sounds of it, these teams are huge and like teamwork makes dream work by the sounds of it. Like everyone's doing yeah. their own job, but you're all working on the same thing. So, um, yeah, it yeah, like, yeah. Very much, very much so, Beck. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's one of those things where you can see, uh, you can see that hyper, that, that, uh, that end goal. You know what it is. You can see, you can almost picture, even if you haven't seen the picture of the ship, you can picture what your little bit in that team does to get to that ship, uh, to yeah. get the ship built. Um, yeah. So it's a really important, you know, it's a really yeah. important thing to contribute. You know, people, um, our Navy go on these ships and they need to be reliable. They need to be safe. They need to uh, perform to the right standards so that they can, so that the Navy can do their job. Absolutely, yeah. You're not just like building ships that are going to be carting, um, you know, products across the ocean. You, you know, we're talking about our navy here. Like, it's yeah, super, absolutely. Super yep. cool job. Yeah, sounds awesome. So, um, students at high school who might be about to choose subjects, what sort of subjects would you recommend um, them choose, basically, for high school that might lead them on the right path? Sure. So um, STEM, the STEM subjects are really important for, for a lot of these roles, and you probably wouldn't be all that surprised to, to hear that. So uh, engineering and trades uh, in particular, there, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of maths, there's a lot of science, um, and whatever level you need to come in at, you need to have the, a good understanding of the basics. Um, so those subjects are really important. Um, from my point of view, when I, I think back to when I was studying, I had um, I, I did my uh, high school in New South Wales, and so I had uh, about half of the subjects that I or had half the time that I spent in high school was was doing maths or science. Um, and then you, you still need those other subjects like English. You need to be able to communicate clearly. Um, as you mentioned, Beck, it's it's teamwork, um, and teams function because people know how to communicate properly. So yeah, um, you know, that that's a really important consideration as well yeah uh, yeah so I, I think it's 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 also uh it's also good to think about some of those creative subjects so great to have the specialist science and um and maths and yeah you know, um i'm sure 
computer science is is included in um, in, in a lot of uh, subjects now. So coding, that's all very good. But it may also be really good to have some of those creative subjects because when you're designing something, you need to come up with a creative solution. Yeah. So you need to kind of sort of feed that creative desire that you may have as an individual um, to make sure that you can still function that way um, and come up with the, uh, the the left field, the kind of wacky solution yeah. um, to a really difficult problem. Exactly. Imagine being that young mind that comes comes in with all these brand new ideas of changing the way that things have been done probably for years and years. Like how awesome would that be to be able to come in here with this you know, different ideas and bring it to the table and let's see if we can change things around and make it even better than what it already is. Like, that would be super cool. It, it would, yeah. And and we see that happen all the time. Even even in our role, we have, you know, a new person come in and join the team and, and look at it and go, look at a problem that we've been sort of scratching our heads about for a while and go, well, have you thought about doing that? And go, wish we'd thought about doing that. <laughs> um, and... You know, as soon as you that those different points of view that people have, everyone's got a different background, a different um, set of experiences, and and I see it now with my own kids, where you know, a seven year old, my seven year old can solve problems from that. I just go, how did I not see that solution? Um, and so you know, I, I suppose I, I really want to make people um, feel confident that they bring really important skills and really important knowledge. Uh, and creativity to to this really big enterprise, which is building ships. And I'm sure also um, engaging in young women to get involved in, you know, naval shipbuilding. Like I'm sure that, you know, there's a lot of young men out there who were, you know, construction trade and engineering, but I'm sure young women would be able to bring so much to the table too. So, you know, also a shout out to any young girls out there who are at high school. You know, this this is not just for the blokes, you know, I think sometimes there's preconceptions that naval shipbuilding, okay, that sounds, you know, maybe something that's male dominated, but I'm sure it's not. And I'm sure that young, young females can bring so much to the table as well. Absolutely. And there are lots of uh, companies now that are having, that have got big programs to try and get more women into the workforce, because we know that if we have a diverse workforce, that's a much better outcome. Um, People have different ways of thinking, different neural pathways yeah. that allow them to come up with better solutions um, quicker. Uh, you know, I, I, I mentioned I studied engineering. Um, the, uh, the person who topped the class for, engin for electrical engineering at the Defence Force Academy the year that I went through just happened to be a girl. Uh, yeah. And she was just an amazing technical engineer. Uh, yeah. You know, um, and, and we now see some really good programs happening. Um, so Austell, who are one of the big shipbuilders, um, uh, if you're in WA, you'll see the adverts that feature um, Matilda, who's a, uh, a heavy fabrication welder. Um, you know, when she started in the, in, in the industry with Austell, she started a, on a pre-apprenticeship um, and she had that sort of three or four week work placement there. Um, Matilda is uh, very slightly built and I was a little bit worried that if, um, if the wind got up around, uh, around Henderson she was going to have to hold on to something heavy because she was going to get blown <laughs> away um, and, uh, she, but she was and remains the hardest working pre-out that, they that they've ever had uh, the guy who was, uh, who was managing said every time he went out she was just, he never saw a stop um, and you know those we want those people. Um, yeah. We absolutely need those people in our industry. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's not just about those, uh, those roles that we sort of traditionally associate with, um, with shipbuilding. Um, there's a massive demand for engineers. There's a massive demand. There's a big demand for, uh, for project managers and accountants and um, you know, all of the support staff that go into this as well. So um, we know that there's uh, you know, um, more than 200 different job roles that you can do in naval shipbuilding. Yeah, amazing. So if students are listening and they'd like to find out more information, where should they head to? Well, best place to go is our website. So navalshipbuildingcollege.com.au. Um, it's just there, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> so 
go to, go to our website um, and you can get a lot more information about uh, the careers that are available on the website. Um, you can have a look at some of the career paths that you might like to follow um, and learn a little bit more about those, those roles. Um, and, and you can also um, uh, see where we might be. So we, we do lots of events throughout the year. Um, so if, if you see career expos, um, you know, we're generally going to be at a career expo. Um, please come up and have a chat to us. Uh, and uh, and the, the other point, the other thing you can do on the website is hop onto the Workforce Register. So the Workforce Register is an initiative that uh, NSC runs. Um, it is it's free for everyone to join. Um, and once you come in there, once you register for a, uh, a conversation, one of our consultants will make a time for a phone conversation with you. Um, if you want to have mum or dad or a teacher join in the phone conversation, that's absolutely fine. We encourage that. Um, you can, that phone conversation will talk to you about what you're interested in, yep. uh, what those opportunities might be. It might help you decide on some subjects. If you're in, uh, you know, if you're going into year 11, year 12, it yep. might help you find other training opportunities if you're coming towards the end of your, your schooling. Um, and the other thing that you'll get will be a regular feed of, um, of the jobs that are available in industry. Okay. You'll get those coming through fairly regularly. Um, you get a, a weekly update. Um, and even if you're not at a stage where you're ready to start applying for jobs, that can give you a really good idea of what's out there. Out there, yeah. What a great um, resource. Yeah, yeah we, we're, it, it is really good. And we, we, we're, uh, we're pretty happy with it. It's, yeah. We've got a new version coming out soon, and that's actually going to feature um, us pushing to the industry you know, sort of like the employee of the week, you know, someone cool, someone new comes into the register, um, they've got an interesting background, they might have done something a little bit different. We go, hey, this is someone we really want to push and help them get a job. So yeah. um, you know, there's, there's opportunities for people to be that employee of the week as well. Works both ways. Well, that sounds absolutely, absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Duncan. It was really interesting to have a chat. No worries. Thanks very much, Beck. It's been great to talk to you about, uh, about naval shipbuilding careers.